Good morning, PGC disciples and guests. Get ready for our morning announcements. Grove Kids, teens are back. Services being held every second and fourth Sunday. PGC Disciples, we need your help. Connect and share. Join our Facebook group to encourage one another and stay updated with church events. For upcoming events, visit the PGC website under Events and Community News. PGC Nursery has resumed. Contact Disciple Jessica Bell or notify the church office to volunteer. We live in a world where safety must be a concern. PGC security and safety team is looking for volunteers. Contact Disciple Anita Wallace for more details. Join us on Tuesday night prayer call for all leaders and disciples of PGC. Want to get stronger in the word? Join us for online Bible study, Wednesdays noon to 1.30 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Want an encore of our service? Check out our YouTube channel, Facebook Live, or our podcast. That's right, we have a podcast. You can listen to our podcast from any of your favorite podcast platforms. To find a podcast platform, go to either Google Play or App Store and search for Spotify, iTunes, or your favorite platform. Partner with us as we share the love of Jesus Christ through our local and global outreach. Thank you for joining us and get ready for a powerful worship experience. Good morning, PGC disciples and guests. Get ready for our morning announcements. Grove Kids, teens are back. Services being held every second and fourth Sunday. PGC Disciples, we need your help. Connect and share. Join our Facebook group to encourage one another and stay updated with church events. For upcoming events, visit the PGC website under Events and Community News. PGC Nursery has resumed. Contact Disciple Jessica Bell or notify the church office to volunteer. We live in a world where safety must be a concern. PGC security and safety team is looking for volunteers. Contact Disciple Anita Wallace for more details. Join us on Tuesday night prayer call for all leaders and disciples of PGC. Want to get stronger in the word? Join us for online Bible study, Wednesdays noon to 1.30 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Want an encore of our service? Check out our YouTube channel, Facebook Live, or our podcast. That's right, we have a podcast. You can listen to our podcast from any of your favorite podcast platforms. To find a podcast platform, go to either Google Play or App Store and search for Spotify, iTunes, or your favorite platform. Partner with us as we share the love of Jesus Christ through our local and global outreach. Thank you for joining us and get ready for a powerful worship experience. 
Good morning, PGC disciples and guests. Get ready for our morning announcements. Grove Kids, teens are back. Services being held every second and fourth Sunday. PGC Disciples, we need your help. Connect and share. Join our Facebook group to encourage one another and stay updated with church events. For upcoming events, visit the PGC website under Events and Community News. PGC Nursery has resumed. Contact Disciple Jessica Bell or notify the church office to volunteer. We live in a world where safety must be a concern. PGC security and safety team is looking for volunteers. Contact Disciple Anita Wallace for more details. Join us on Tuesday night prayer call for all leaders and disciples of PGC. Want to get stronger in the word? Join us for online Bible study, Wednesdays noon to 1.30 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Want an encore of our service? Check out our YouTube channel, Facebook Live, or our podcast. That's right, we have a podcast. You can listen to our podcast from any of your favorite podcast platforms. To find a podcast platform, go to either Google Play, In basketball, much like life, there are ups and downs, success and failure, endless obstacles and challenges. You see, basketball is a team sport which requires contribution and cooperation from every member to play well and win. Everyone must focus, work together, and fulfill their individual roles for the common good of the team. That's what you will find here at Pleasant Grove Church, a team. Better yet, you will find a family. At Pleasant Grove, we are a non-denominational church that welcomes everyone to become part of our loving family where you can connect with others, be inspired to serve, and grow in the ways and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hi, I'm Classy Preston, Senior Pastor of Pleasant Grove Church. And this has been a phenomenal year for us as we have served with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are church-focused on serving those in need in our communities and around us. We believe the commandment of Jesus Christ that we should take care of those among us who cannot care for themselves. I have learned that the church is very much like a game of basketball. And my favorite team, of course, <laughs> the Warriors. I watch all the time and I'm able to see how their offensive moves uh, improve the game and get them to the finish line and how their defense has to be strong and everybody has to be in the right space. The church is in the same place because our job is to assign people according to their spiritual gifts and well, how has God blessed them. And I find myself feeling like a coach because we're constantly looking for new ways to win disciples for you, Jesus Christ, new ways to witness, new ways to serve. I believe our outreach ministry is a great example of a great team. Do we win every game? No, but we play every game without all that we have in the name of Jesus. Yes, life is a game of basketball, and it's very important that we know the team we're on, that we understand uh, the game plan, we know where we fit, we know how to witness, and we know when, when, when to push ourselves so that we can get over the finish line. May God bless you. Please check us out. Be a warrior. Welcome to the Grove.
Everybody say bless. 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 Bless.
I don't know what you're going through, for the Lord is good. And his love endures forever and ever and ever. Faithfulness to all generations. So, Father God, we thank you. You are good. You are so good. Every time we turn around, you are blessing us. God, we thank you, God, for the privilege of worship, God. There are many people right now who are bound, who are confused, who are lost out in the world. But God, you are blessed that we may come into the house to lift up your name and to give you the praise that is fitting unto your name. So God, we pray that you will have your way. Send down your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to take over this worship experience that your name will be glorified and our soul will be edified. So we thank you and we praise you in the precious and the matchless name of Jesus we pray. And God's people say, Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord, on high. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Your praises shall continuously be in my mouth. And I want to just thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're about to do. I give you all the honor. And I, I look at anticipation of your glory. Thy will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah! 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 H
week, the past month, the yes. past year, yes. 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 I'm sure each and every one of us Thank can pick out at least three things, at least three Thank things that he has done. Yes. 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 Whether you knew it or not, yes. he was in the midst of all your yes. blessings. Whether you knew it or not, yes. he was right there with you walking through yes. your storm. Yes. Yes. The Bible keeps telling us that he is our anchor. Yes. Not an anchor that holds us down, but an anchor that keeps us lifted up. Yes. And that we not, might not be dripped away by life's challenges. Amen. Yes. Amen. So he is just too good to us. Yes. He's just a marvelous, uh, marvelous God. Yes. And we can sing praises every day, but it won't be enough. It will not be enough yes. to show him how much we love him. Amen. Oh, how.
desperately I long.
help me sing, Lord God. Every eyes closed. I just want you to meditate on that word. That God is holy. That you are in the presence of royalty. Isaiah tells us in Isaiah chapter 6 that the seraphim and the sheriff, they are flying and worshiping God, saying, Holy, holy, holy. Thou art holy. What a privilege it is to be in the presence of this holy God. We bless the name of the Lord. The Hebrew word for holy is Kodesh, which really implies a reverence, exaltation, adoration. You standing in awe of this awesome and almighty God. When you enter into the house to worship, you're in the presence of the foremost being that created all things. That's why you have to get your hearts ready. You ought to worship God in spirit and in truth. For he and he alone is holy. If you only understood what that meant, you will just get excited just for the privilege of being in the presence of God. Can you imagine that the angels are worshiping God, but yet he saw fit to allow you to worship him. Somebody ought to give God some praise. 
Oftentimes I find myself say, I don't know why you chose me. There are people who are better than me by nature than I can ever be by practice. But yet you've allowed me to worship your name. I don't know why. We bless God. We certainly are, hallelujah, happy for all those who are streaming live. We understand that you do have many options. But God has so fixed it that you would worship with us this morning, and we do thank God for you. And we pray that you would contact us and let us know. I do get a lot of uh, prayer requests. I think in the last two weeks, I had 11 prayer requests from online. So our multimedia uh, ministry is doing a wonderful job. We've got all kinds of prayer requests, people asking for prayer for salvation, for personal issues, and I respond to them by email, each and every person. If they say we can call them, we do call them. But let them know that Pleasant Grove Church is praying for them, and standing in solidarity with them. And so we do thank you. If you are streaming live, let us know if you need us to pray for you and with you. And for those of you, my father's uh, children here in the sanctuary, we are happy to see you. I wonder if there's any visitors among us this morning. If so, could you just stand? Yes, we can make a fuss over you. Praise God. Thank God for your beautiful smile. We certainly are happy to see you this morning. We believe that the steps of the righteous are ordered by God, and we are happy to see you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We do have a few announcements. Um, we have a card from Sister Edith. As you, many of you know, uh, Sister Edith's son uh, transitioned and went to uh, be with the Lord. I think it was about uh, the month of uh, May. And she sent a card to PGC saying, thanking God for you. Ephesians 1 verse 16. I'm very grateful for everything. Your love, kindness, phone calls, and gifts were a blessing to me and the family. Sincerely, Sister Edith Gibbons. We are praying continuously for you, our dear sister. We understand uh, the challenges of uh, uh, knowing that your son has transitioned. So may God continue to give you his comforting grace. We have a, a, a letter from uh, a church which uh, Pleasant Grove Church had blessed. It's in Wayne, Arkansas, First Baptist Church. It says, on behalf of the pastor and members of First Baptist Church in Wayne, Arkansas, we would like to say thank you for your generous donation to our church and the work of rebuilding the Lord's house. We have faced many challenges in this process. Your gift is a testament that God's provisional hand is everywhere helping to meet the needs to those who are scattered abroad in the body of Christ. As we continue to rebuild our house of worship, we ask for your continued prayers as this project, Lord willing, will continue into the year 2024. Since March 2023, we have been busy with cleanup, outreach to those affected by the disaster, meeting with community partners, and planning for the future. We have recently broke ground and the work has begun. And it is with your assistance that we have been able to move quicker than planned. And it has been a blessing. In the words of the Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal dis distribution unto him and unto all men, and by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thank you again. And if we can be of support to you, please do not hesitate to contact us. You will be able to see the progress of the rebuilding on our Facebook page, First Baptist of Wayne, Arkansas. God bless. Sincerely, Leslie Wilkinson, a senior pastor. Amen? Amen. So, so when we are asking 
for uh, tithe and offering, I want you to know that we are doing a great work at Pleasant Grove Church as we extend the ministry beyond the reaches of these walls. We are blessing as we are being blessed by your gifts and your uh, tithe and offering. We have another letter from the, the Red Cross, and it reads, Dear Reverend Classy and my fellow saints at PGC, thank you for taking a moment to write a very touching message on my board. My life has been rewarded and blessed immeasurably by being connected to wonderful people like Dr. Classy and Jay and other believers who give of their time, talent, treasure, and in my career, their blood to help others. I look forward to what God has planned for the coming years, but I do know that I, want, that I will want to honor and serve him that I may not only assist with the physical needs of others, but also be a vessel where others may see Christ in their lives and desire to know him too. Amen. So we thank God for these letters and for the work that Pleasant Grove Church disciples are doing in and throughout our community. Amen. Amen. It is giving time. Uh, as you understand, just from these letters, there's a reason why I read them right prior to uh, asking for the tithe and offering, that what you are doing, your contribution, is certainly not only is needed, but it's changing lives and impacting our community. And if you need an envelope, please lift up your hand and someone may give you one. For those of you who like to give to our ministry and are in the sanctuary, you can just get a, an envelope. But if you are watching via television or a Roku device, you can use your phone to scan the QR code. Or you can use our cash app, dollar sign PGC Carry. If you are on Facebook, you can use the link in the chat uh, and also use our cash app. As always, you can mail your checks to P.O. Box 3603, Cary, North Carolina 27519 or go to our website and click the Give button. We certainly thank God for you. As you heard from these letters, your service, your ministry, your giving is changing lives. So to God be the glory. In Proverbs 11.25, we read, For whoever brings blessings will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. Amen. Father, we thank you for what you are doing in this season. We bless your holy and righteous name for being such an awesome God. It is indeed a privilege to invest in your kingdom. It is an investment that will reap many uh, harvests thereafter. So we pray, God, that you will soften the hearts of those who are in the sanctuary and those who are watching the streaming, Lord God, that they will understand that there is a great need out there right now. The need for food, the need for housing, the need for assistance. Many people are struggling. And God, it is through the giving that we are able, Lord God, to be your hands, your feet, your eyes, your heart. And express the love that you have so that they can understand that you have not forsaken them. So bless us now, God, and bless these gifts that we are about to receive. God, that they will increase manifold. And we'll continue to do the kingdom work here at Pleasant Grove Church. We bless you and we thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. It is an exciting time. It's time for the word. Amen. Amen. And we have our own Irvin Tony, who is ready. The reading our scripture is coming from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Verse 1 to 13, and it says, After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites, with some of the Mehunites, came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazazan, Tamar. That is, in Gedi. Alarmed, 
Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You ruled over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now, here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All the men of Judah, with their wives and their children and little ones, stood there before the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 After a uh, selection from the choir, after hearing from this awesome praise team, I should say, we will hear from our own Reverend Tony with the sermon entitled, What Do You Do When Bad News Come Knocking on Your Door? Amen. <laughs> I will trust 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, uh, God is comical in, 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 in some ways. Three of the songs they sung today are in all of my scripture passages. I don't know if the Holy Spirit came and visited with them first and says, I'll give you an insight as to what Tony's going to talk about. I, I just don't know. All I do know is that their words are the same words I'm going to share with you today. And one of my, <laughs> one of my uh, students in one of my classes says repetition is good, so it's okay if we hear it again. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, I praise the Lord. He, I, I, I give him all the honor. Uh, God is the head of my life and the life of my family. I'm praying for my wife who's in California headed home today so she won't be in the audience with you, but that's going to be okay. To Pastor Preston, to the leadership of this church, and to everyone under the sound of my voice, I welcome you here today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am also honored to um, uh, uh, teach a class during midweek Bible study and I see a lot of those um, uh, class members are here today, so praise the Lord. <laughs> I count it as, as a privilege. This is what I call the double Dutch. You know, get to get it twice. Well, praise the Lord. Today's message is titled, What Do You Do When Bad News Come Knocking on Your Door? News that is so devastating at times that you start to become unrivaled and afraid to start to lose your composure and hope and your faith becomes shaken with fear and uncertainty. The question is, what do you do? In our midweek Bible study from time to time, I will ask the class, I says, do you know scriptures and Bible verses that you can remember, that you understand, and that you can recite in the time of need. I call this a valuable asset. I call this having a back pocket scriptures. Scriptures that you can count on when they're necessary in, in the case of an emergency. See, after all, scriptures are God's promises to sustain us, to keep us. They're there to encourage us, give us hope, to comfort us, to deliver us from all of our fears and to remind us that God is a shelter during a time of storms. He is a refuge in a time of trouble. He promises never to leave us or forsake us. Knowing and understanding key scriptures can be paramount to your survival. We all have emergencies from time to time in our lives that we have to deal with. We all have an enemy called the devil that is forever present, and he's determined to steal, kill, destroy, and cause confusion. But God's promises are true and trustworthy. God swore by himself because there was none greater than himself that he would always keep his promises to you as believers. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. Our scriptures for today came from 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. I would encourage you all, we're not going to go through the whole chapter, but go back and read it. It's a fascinating read. There's a lot of valuable nuggets stuck in those scriptures that will make a difference in your lives. I encourage you to go back. But one day, King Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, received some very disturbing news. Three of his neighboring nations had joined forces, and they were about 12 miles from his border, and they were dressed in battle gear, ready to invade his nation with their combined armies, which was massive. Jehoshaphat was faced with a catastrophic crisis. He was going to a war that he didn't know anything about. Can you imagine? 
See, the enemy doesn't play fair. And they will also, oftentimes, they'll try to blindside you to take the advantage and to weaken you. We all have enemies. We may not have knowledge of them, but if you're in the family of God, they're there. So saints of God, in our daily lives, we all will have to face storms in our lives. Some of us say, well, I'm just coming out of a storm. Others might say that I'm in the midst of a storm. And then there's others says that the, the storm is gathering in the horizon. It's coming. The question is, how will you handle the storm? It is my prayer today that today's message will give us some answers to live by. So let's take a moment to pray. Eternal and all-wise God, we welcome you here today. We know you to be a covenant-keeping God who is full of grace and mercy. We are assembled here today to receive from you a message of hope, comfort, deliverance, and instructions. Use me today to deliver your message with clarity and conviction. Amen. Amen. Israel was split into two nations or two kingdoms. They had the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. King Jehoshaphat was ruler over the southern kingdom. He lived in Jerusalem. He was in the lineage of David. And God said that he was a good king. The three neighboring nations that were set to invade his country included the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Mennonites. They came with their massive armies. They were within 12 to 14 miles of Judah's doorsteps. Scripture says that King Jehoshaphat was alarmed and he was afraid, but without hesitation he turned to get counsel from God. Hallelujah. See, he didn't go and consult with his inner circles, nor did he gather his army generals together. He did not call on his prophets, his preachers, his pastors, nor did he call on his prayer partners. He, he, uh, he, he didn't even reason within himself, what can I do? There was no time for a pity party, and there was no time for anxiety to set in. I believe King Jehoshaphat reached into his back pocket, and he pulled out a scripture from Deuteronomy 1, and it, and it, it, it reads like this. It says, when you go to war against your enemies and you see their horses and their chariots and you see their army is greater than yours, do not be afraid of them because the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt will be with you. Hallelujah. Jehoshaphat went straight to God, Jehovah, the God who keeps his covenants with his people. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, it says that he keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. So in other words, God will not fail you. The king called for a fast of all of Judah. Saints, there are times when praying alone is not enough. See, this is spiritual warfare. The stakes are high. And, and, and in this kind of situation, it requires both fasting and praying. Hallelujah. See, there was no time for Jehoshaphat to get his army and his, his, his army together to mount a defense. See, time was not on his side. He needed answers now. The people of Judah, they responded. And they all stood with their king on one accord. They said, God, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. See, fasting increases your access to heaven's help. Fasting forces you to be humble yourself before God. Fasting strengthens your confidence and your faith in God. Fasting strengthens, your, you, strengthens you spiritually and increases your effectiveness in prayer. The people gathered in the halls of the new court with Jehoshaphat, and he prayed. This, and I consider it a fascinating and unique prayer. 
starting in verse 6 down to 9. Listen to what he says. He says, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that there's no one able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before the people Israel? And you gave it to your descendants of Abraham, your friend forever. And they lived in it and they built you a sanctuary for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword of judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and we will cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear us. Further down in verse 12, it says, They all stood, men, women, children, and babies. It says, We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Hallelujah. See, God is, he's never late, and he's always on time. As they were standing, the Holy Spirit, God sent his Holy Spirit. He says, go and give them this message. The Holy Spirit was sent by God to give a message before the assembly of Judah and the king Jehoshaphat. This is reassurance. He spoke through the mouth of a Levite who was in the audience. He says, listen, thus says the Lord, do not be afraid or dismay. This battle is not yours. It's God's battle. You put your request in and God listens if you're willing to wait for him. See, we oftentimes send a message to God, then we all want to get into the message. Well, what can I do, God? How can I be of service? What can I do better? God doesn't need our help. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. The Holy Spirit also said, on tomorrow morning, go down to the battlefield. You will not have to fight in this battle, but get yourself in position. And then he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord is here with you. See, there are times when God wants you to face your circumstances. Why? It's because they are never out of control, regardless of your hard times and the trials that you may be dealing with or the tribulation that you're going through. It may just be a test. Romans 8 28 says for those who love the Lord and are calling according to his purpose he says he is working it together for your good. I don't know why I'm going through it but I know at the end of the day it'll be for my good. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. See he is with you but the battle is not yours. I encourage you to seek God's comfort every day by laying your burdens at Jesus' feet. There he'll give you strength to face whatever comes. His mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And it says the key to Jehoshaphat and Judah's success was that it gave their, they, what they, they gave their burdens to the Lord. Then they bowed down in worship to God. You know what worship is? Worship is when God summons us together in his presence to talk to us. Then it's followed with high praise. This is when you and I get an opportunity to talk to him, to show him our adoration, to show him our love, to show him our confidence in him. Hallelujah. The battle is not yours. And we do all of this before the battle gets started. As a matter of fact, I know what's going to go on, but in the event it happens, I'm going to go to the God first to get my amens in. I'm going to go get my adorations in. I'm going to go get in. Lord, I know you can do it. I'm going to just leave it with you. The battle is not yours. 
In our praise, it's God is present and he's glorified uh, when his people lift his name in honor. See, I believe God enjoys it. Perhaps he even brings a little peace and a little rest to him. See, he draws near when we praise him. He inhabits the praises of his people. He wants to hear from you. It shows our submission to him, our thankfulness to him. He is worthy of our attention and adoration. Further down in verse 20, it says, and they rose up early in the morning. There's something about finding God early in the morning. But they rose up early in the morning, and they went down to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood, and he said, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And verse 21 says, And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of his holiness. Did I hear, did I hear that earlier? The beauty of his holiness? Yeah. And as they went out before the army, and they said, Praise the Lord, for his mercy shall endure forever. And when they began to sing to the praise, God set an ambush. You know, God knows how to set you up. He set up an ambush against the children that had come against his people. They were all smitten. Amen. Then they, what happened was is that there was three armies coming after them. Well, one army, well, the two armies decide they're going to kill all the people in the one army. So now there's two armies left. Guess what? They start fighting each other. Just confusion in the camp. They purpose to come and take care of God's people in Israel, but God turned the situation on them. I'll just tell you what, it ha what happened in Laban's term. It said Jehoshaphat led the congregation down to the battlefield. He, he put his praise team on the front line. Then he brought his army behind them, but they led the charge. Oh, somebody ought to say amen. <laughs> So he put them in the front line, and then they sung this song. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. You see, God inhabits the praises of his people. So my question is, what do you do when bad news come knocking at your door? Oh, my Lord. Anyway, many of us, or many of you know that several, a couple months ago, I received some disturbing news. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer and totally caught me off guard because it was found during my annual physical review. Men, I encourage you, keep those, don't cancel those uh, appointments. Make them on a regular basis. But to make a long story short, I was referred to a urologist who confirmed that I had cancer. He told me that I needed to take a PET scan. It was one of the best tools to help identify and locate where the cancer was in your prostate. He said the, the scan would cost over $10,000, and he said most insurance companies won't pay for it. Uh, as a matter of fact, he says most of his patients go overseas, get the scan, come back for less than what it costs to get it in the United States. But he said, the urologist said, he said, what I'll do, I'll go ahead and submit the request to your insurance company. He says, it's going to take about three to four weeks before I can get back with you. Uh, whether it's good or bad, whether it's positive or negative, I don't know how they're going to come back with it, but it's, it's going to take some time. I left the doctor's office as I was traveling to my car. I started asking myself, how am I going to explain that I really do have cancer to my wife and children? Then... And it's going to come at a price tag. <laughs> One thing to get cancer didn't get charged for it too? My Lord. But anyway, I immediately reached into my back pocket and I pulled out a scripture. And I made a phone call to Jesus and got him on the main line. And I told him all about my troubles. And, I, and see, I remember the word. He says, uh, in the time of trouble, you can call me. 
So I gave him a call and I just started praising God for his son, laying down his life for me at Calvary, paying the price in full. You see, I'm not my own. I've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus. I start praising God and his son for what they did for me, and I reminded God of all the many things good that he did for me. Just to let him know that you've done it before, you can do it again. Hallelujah. I tell him that I'm not walking in my own strength, but I'm walking in the strength of him. Oh, my God. I just said, Lord, I just want to thank you. Hallelujah. About 20 minutes into my drive home, trying to keep my composure, I received a phone call from a lady from the doctor's office. She says, um, uh, I I'm calling you to see when you want to take the test. I said, well, I, I can't get, I can't get, I don't know. My doctor's told me it's going to be three to four weeks, and I can't give you a definitive answer till I hear from him. She says, well, then I am the answer. When do you want to come in? When do you want to come in to get that scan? I said, <laughs> she says, oh, by the way, I've got an opening tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Woo, my Lord. <laughs> well, I went on and I got that scan. And yes, it told me where the cancer was. It was located in the prostate in a certain area. I got to looking at my chart and it gave me the price of what that scan cost. Yes, it did. It cost $10,600, but my out-of-pocket expense was less than... Uh, over a hundred and sixty plus dollars. God will work it out. God will work it out. Hallelujah. Just, just like King Jehoshaphat. See, this battle is not mine. I waited to hear from the Lord. I got in position so that I could receive all that he had for me, and I stood on the word. I put on my whole armor of God. I was not going to move with him. See, I was there to see the salvation of the Lord. You see, God is already working it out in my favor. Hallelujah. See, that's what gives me the motivation and the will to get up and to worship and to praise God with all that I have. I'm looking forward to a total healing in advance of my surgery and my treatment. Praise ye the God. My surgery is going to take place August the 3rd. I'm going to leave you with this. I want to thank each and every one of you that's been praying because your prayers is making a difference. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, let's give God some praise. Yeah. Reverend Tony raised the question, what do you do when trouble come knocking on your door? And he answered the question, he said, I pray. You know, this morning I came in the sanctuary, and as normal, I know on first Sunday, Sister LaPonda Flowers will be one of the first people to be here. And she came in, and I, as normally as I would check with her, see how you doing? And she showed me that one of her arm. Now, Sister LaPonda, as you make your way forward, we want to pray for you. As many of you know, she has been struggling with a shoulder issue. Has had a couple of uh, surgeries, I believe. She's still in a lot of pain. And if you can't tell, one of the arms... It's bigger than the other. She was taking a very, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking on the phone, and she told me the doses of what she was taking just to alleviate the pain. She said, sometimes you don't know what people are going through. You see that beautiful smile? She come in first Sunday, I guarantee you, I'm here by 7.30, she'll be here by 7.35. Guarantee. Always ready to do what it needs to be done. At great physical pain. She never cheats Pleasant Grove Church of her service. But Reverend Tony just reminded us this morning, the battle is not hers. Amen? Amen. How many believers know that God can heal sister? 
As I was sitting there, the Holy Spirit said, call her and pray for her. Are there anyone else that needs prayer this morning? Anybody else who's dealing with something that you need God to bless you? You heard what Reverend Tony said. God works quick sometimes. Sometimes he waits a little bit, but he can move very fast. Yes, Sister Nita, make your way forward. I know what you're going through. The way I see it is that God is in this house. You might as well get your blessing. Don't, don't leave and not grab hold of your blessing. And Reverend John, just put your hands on Sister LaPonda. Sometimes the doctors, they do the best that they can, but it's still not enough. That's what Sister LaPonda told me. Our hope is in the Lord. Our trust, our faith are in Him. He is a deliverer and a healer. And so in this morning, if you need prayer, we invite you to come. Don't, don't leave this experience without grabbing hold of what God has for you. So Father, we come in the precious name of Jesus. The name that is above every other name. What did God said, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And I add, at the name of Jesus, Sister LaPonda, your shoulder pain will have to go away. At the name of Jesus, cancer, Reverend Tony, will have to flee. At the name of Jesus, everything that so easily attacks us, the Moabites that we have in our lives, the Mennonites who have come against us, to which war will find out that the battle is not ours, but it is the Lord. So God, we come lifting up, Lord God, our dear sister and all those who are going through. David said in Psalm 23, Yea, though I go through the valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I'm so glad that you are God who keeps us as we go through. Because on the other side of through is deliverance. Is a praise, is a testimony. So right now in the name of Jesus, I extend my hand over our dear sister and speak healing in her shoulder in the name of Jesus. Right now, God, that you remove the pain and give her relief as only you can. I know that you are a healer. I know that you are a way maker. I know that you are still moving in this season. I know, God, that you still got all by yourself. And nothing is impossible with you. Wrap your arms around our dear sister Anita. As she prepares to funeralize her sister, I pray that you will give her your comforting grace. As a reminder that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Oh God, we are excited to hear what you have started to do in the life of Reverend Tony. But I believe the word of God said, he who will begun a good work in you will bring it to completion. Oh God, I'm waiting for the day when we can praise the name of the living God and glorify and magnify you when, Dick, when Reverend Tony would say cancer is gone. We're waiting for the day, God, where we can celebrate your goodness, Lord God. And we thank you in advance for what you have already done and what you are doing right now. So bless now these your children, God. Many of us are tired we are mourning and grieving. We are weighed down with the issues of life. 
But we come bringing everything to you at the altar. And ask that you would take it and give us rest for our souls. So we bless you, God. We magnify your holy and righteous name because you're such an awesome God. Be with us, I pray, on this day and this week throughout the rest of our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we open up the doors of the church, God cannot fight your battle if you don't have a relationship with Him. And so we invite you on this day to learn about the God that Reverend Tony talked about, the one that can work miracles. And if you're watching us online, it, it is very simple. It's as simple as ABC. That you can give God your heart by admitting that you're a sinner, by believing that Jesus Christ is Lord and confessing that in Him alone can salvation be found. And on this day, we offer Christ to you because we believe that He is the answer to the problems that we all face. Will there be one on this day? By letter, candidate for baptism, under your own Christian experience. Will there be one? And if you have made that decision online, I would that you would pray this prayer with me. As I said, we would love to hear from you. Let us know that we can journey with you. It simply says, I admit that I am a sinner and there is nothing that I can do to save myself. I ask for your forgiveness. At this moment, I believe that you alone are the one who bore my sins. When you died on the cross and rose from the dead. Today, I turn from my sinful life and invite you into my heart. I will trust you and follow you all of the days of my life. Thank you for saving me and hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer in faith and receive Christ into your heart, you are now a child of God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing at the good news. And if you desire to unite with a Bible-believing, loving, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led church, please check us out at 1528 Davis Drive. We will love to unite with you. Amen? You may be seated. As it is our ritual on first Sunday we serve communion communion is open to all baptized believers and when Dick and Linda reached out last week and told me that she wanted me to lead communion I looked and did some research. I think sometimes we underestimate the, the ritual of communion. The communion of God's people is made manifest in the Lord's Supper. Those who gather to commune with God become members of one body, His church. This fellowship that is created and celebrated at the table makes it appropriate to speak of the service of communion as holy communion. The emphasis here is on communion. 
To speak of communion is to speak of the unity of all Christians now scattered about in their various churches, uniting with each other to celebrate the goodness of God. Because we are forgiven and made one in Christ, we can also be one with one another. The table is the occasion for each of us as individual Christians to be reconciled with God and with our neighbors. When we share bread and wine with one another, watch this, then all squabbling, all argument, all burdens, and all hierarchy recede into the background. Because we experience anew that we belong together. The many are one body, as Paul said. The church fathers call that communio sanctorum in Latin, which means community of the saints. No one is against their neighbor. We all hear these words often enough. And often enough, we do not live up to them. Because we are human. Far from being as generous as we would like to be. Often bearing grudges. Envious and skeptical. Confession and repentance then are necessary continually. So that we can come to the Lord's table openly and freely. We are called to one table. Notice the table is at the center. Every believer is called to one table. There is not a table for the rich, a table for the poor, a table for the white, a table for the black. We are called to one table. Yet we are warned against coming in an unworthy manner. The Greek word that Paul uses there is anaxios, which means we have to come in solidarity with each other. After all, this is a common meal. That's what Paul meant to say, that everyone that eats the communion bread and drink this wine, they are signed a contract to be part of one community, one body. In one God, one church. Have you ever paid attention to what uh, the motto of our church says as a result of the, um, of the uh, 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 thing we did for the uh, marketing plan? It says what? Anybody knows what, what it says? What's the mantra, the motto for? It's always on the, uh, on the screen in the morning. It says one what? One church, one love, one community, right? Right there. One love, one church, one community. I am no better than you. You are no better than me. In the presence of God, we are all the same. So when we come to the table, we come in unity. Hence the word communion. Communion is a time of thanksgiving because Jesus offered to God thanks, according to the book of Matthew, at the supper. In fact, the Greek word for communion is Eucharist, which simply means thanksgiving. Communion is also a time of remembrance. The word for remembrance in the New Testament reminds us that we have to give thanks for all that God has done for us. It refers to bringing the past forward into the present. It is making the sacrificial love of Jesus, his death and resurrection, present in our lives today. You don't just take communion on Sunday morning. You live it out every day. What does that mean? I can't just walk away from this table and then start talking about so-and-so. 
mistreating so and so. One community in the presence of God. And the last time I checked, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. We're not just in his presence in the sanctuary, but he, we are in his presence at home. And communion is also an opportunity to remember and cherish the sacrificial death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who emptied himself to take on the form of a lowly servant. Hence, Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds, the, 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 the King James Version said, by his stripes, we are healed. During communion, we remember that the covenant renewed in Jesus that brought our salvation was sealed by the pouring of the blood of Jesus as a sacrifice for our sins. And the so songwriter says, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. So then, whoever eats the bread and drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Therefore, we're going to take a few minutes to examine ourselves and repent of every sinful thought, ideas, attitudes, and disposition that we are harboring within us. The Holy Spirit often reminds us that we all leak righteousness. We leak holiness. We leak kindness. Ask, ask God to search us and to prepare us to receive this holy, holy meal that allows us to commune with God and with our neighbor. Let us pray. Father, search us. Shine your heavenly lights in our souls, in our hearts. Expose every ungodly thoughts, attitudes, desires. Clean us up. Sanctify us, Lord God, I pray. Whatever ill will or feeling attitude that we are harboring against a neighbor, give us a heart of forgiveness that we may unite in spirit and in truth as we partake in this holy communion. Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness that you've already given. Help us to walk and to live in the renewal of our minds and in our lives that we may be holy and acceptable in your sight. So we thank you now, God, and we bless you for the privilege to commune with you and with one another in holy communion. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me get my bread and wine. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26, Paul said, For I receive from the Lord what I have also passed on to you. But before I go, I want to be sure that everybody has their communion cup. If you don't have one, please lift up your hand. If you need help opening it, please let someone know. I want to encourage you to check on your neighbor to make sure that they're able to open their communion to get the wafers and to open up the, uh, the little uh, wine cup. And Paul said, and when he had given thanks, he broke the bread. The bread represents his body that will be broken 
that has been broken for us at Calvary. Let us take of such. And in the same way, after he took the cup, he blessed it. He said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink. And the word of God said that they sang in him and they departed in Mount of Olives. You may stand. May God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord.